Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to remove power lines using Lightroom. Now I have to say at the top that Lightroom will do a fine job on power lines that are isolated like these power lines are. They're in front of a sky. They're not entangled in tree branches. If you have a power line that is entangled in tree branches, Photoshop would do a much better job. Next week, I'll demonstrate how to remove power lines using Photoshop and I'll use a more difficult example. But again, if you have something like this, Lightroom should work fine. Now the tool you're going to be using is the spot removal tool. And I found that the heel brush usually does a better job than the clone brush. Although you could jump between the two to see which works best for the situation you're dealing with. You're going to want to start out with feathering around 20. You could always readjust that and keep opacity at 100. Now, if you have power lines like this that don't have much of a sag in them, it may be tempting to do this. Get a power line that is, or get a brush that is a little bit thicker or has a wider diameter, diameter than the power line. Click on one end, hold the shift key down, go to the opposite end and click again. That will draw a straight line and remove the power line. But what you'll find is if you try to bite off more than Lightroom could chew, it might not do a good job like this. Now one thing I want to add, it's been my understanding from Adobe that of all the tools in Lightroom, the spot removal tool uses the most computing power. So you'll get more lag. Uh, with it than you will with other tools usually. So keep that in mind if your computer is is kind of lagging when you're using this tool. So you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. You want to do this in smaller segments. I found that if you have, for example, the power line starts out here and it's in front of a cloud till about there, then it's in front of blue sky. If you try to take that chunk that's in front of the cloud, it usually will do a good job. So click in one, click at one end, hold the shift key down, go to the other end by the cloud and click again and see what it does. And come off, yeah, that looks pretty good. Now we wanna take another chunk. Now you'll see we have the overlay active. So when I try to get in there and click on this other end, you can see how it, the brush goes away and it turns into the hand asking me, you know, encouraging me to readjust or, re, or move that overlay. To get rid of the overlay, go down here in the toolbar. This little strip of real estate below the image above the film strip is called the toolbar. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key toggles that toolbar off and on. And over here on the far left, you could see tool overlay. There's a drop down. I have mine set to auto, and that's the way I usually want to have it set. But there is a selection never. If you're on never, you could see it disappears. And then when I go over that area, the brush doesn't turn into the hand. So I could take out another chunk, like from here to maybe here where this cloud starts. Now, instead of going down to the toolbar every time and switching between never and auto, what you could do is just hit the H key on your keyboard, H for hide, and you'll hide the toolbar, hit the H key again to bring it back or hide the overlay, I'm sorry, and the overlay will, you know, go away or be a, be there. I'm going to hit the H key so it disappears and I'll take another chunk. I'll click once here. I'll go down to the other end, maybe a right, try to get a little greedy and take it right there. Hold the shift key in and click again and see what that looks like once it renders. It did a pretty good job. Now we'll take this little chunk here. We'll click again there and go here, hold the shift key in and click. And that one didn't look work out so good. Now what you could try to do, hit H to bring that overlay back, right? And we could try to reposition this to a better spot. Something like this. See if that works any better. That doesn't look right. Then what you could do is you could like increase feathering, see if that helps, decrease feathering. And if it just doesn't seem to be working out, just go back, make sure that's active, hit the delete key. Then what you could do is just take little parts or smaller parts, hit the H key again to get rid of that overlay. Just take a smaller part, even just draw like that. That looks all right. Draw like that. 
All right, there's a little bit of a smudge there, but you know, you'll notice it because you know the power line was there and you removed it. But anyone else looking at this, it's not going to look like anything was changed. So now we'll take another section. I'm going to click once with the left mouse button, go down right where the cloud starts over here, hold the shift key in, click again. And you can see that's done. I'm going to click and take another section, click once there, hold the shift key in, go there. And that one's a little funky. I could maybe increase feathering there. Make it look a little better. It takes a second to render. That looks pretty good. Now we'll try again. We'll click once there. And maybe I could take this big chunk. And I'll go to the other end, hold the shift key in. And see if I could take that big chunk. And that looks pretty good. So I got rid of that line. Now we'll come back and go to this line up here. I'll click once there, go to the edge of the clouds, hold the shift key in, click again. And that looks pretty good. I could take this big chunk here, right? I'll click up here once, go down towards right where this cloud starts, hold the shift key in, and get rid of that. See what that looks like once it renders. That looks pretty good. I'm going to click once here, try to take the rest of it down here. Hold the shift key in. See what that looks like once it renders. There. Looks pretty good. Got rid of the power lines. Now look back over here where I removed that power line. See, it looks more natural now that you haven't looked at it for a while. I mean, you could tell there was something a little funky right there where I did remove the power line, but really anyone else looking at that, look how these clouds look up here. See how those look weird? It's just sometimes clouds look odd. So those clouds just look odd over there. So that's how you remove power lines using Lightroom. Again, the key is to remember to use that H key to turn those overlays off and on. And I found the heel brush usually works best. Start out around 20. You may find for some situations you're going to have to push that up for that second power line and part of that first power line. 55 work better. And opacity usually always at 100. You're not going to lower that. Now remember next week I'll do a Photoshop video and I'll have power lines that are entangled in tree branches. And I'll show how to use Photoshop to do a more difficult situation such as that. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.